Hey, good evening. This is Tiger. Welcome to my stream and uh, happy to uh, happy new year to everyone around there. Because if you're watching this video at a later time, today is January the first of the year two thousand and twenty-three. Hey, hey, AJ, thank you very much for moderating my stream again. Um, this stream we will be driving back our train that we drove from Kur to Arosa. On Thursday we will be driving it back from Arosa to Kur, downhill now, and we will have, as promised, a look at the safety systems that are on the train in the DLC. The Arosa Linie by Rivet Games and we will be running a service that starts in the afternoon and I promise we will do this in summer so that we have some light and can have a look at the scenery <coughs> let's see if I find the correct service oh yeah I will use one of those special liveried car uh, locomotives <coughs> that come with the anniversary edition that was sold last year for mm. Christmas, I, gu I guess. With a new timetable and some new scenarios. I have not mm. played any scenario yet, I think. Summer is coming, yeah, I hope we will have some nice winter days still. And that we don't have to deal with 30 degrees and more in February or something like this. Mm. I will set the time to the 1st of July, then it is okay to have some sun on the sky, in the sky. Uh, the service that I wanted to run is 1448 Arosa Tsukur, because I think that it shows us some interesting facts about mm. the route, the safety systems and a bit more signaling to so let's jump into the mm. service. At first I will play dump a bit and uh, create some penalty breaks so we can see how we can recover from that and uh, we can see the safety system at work. So we are here all set to load passengers in the Arosa station, you can see this is one of the special liveried locomotives with 100 years Kur Arosa, this line that we are running on. Obviously they started it in 1914 and in 2014 they had this special livery for their locomotives. The safety systems that are on this locomotive are two more or less. One is a dead, man ped dead man's pedal, you can see it underneath here. If you get up, it gets depressed. If you sit down, it gets pressed again. And to make it work, you have to use this switch, dead man cutout switch. It is cut out by default. If you cut it in, and you can see the pedal is depressed when you're sitting, and it gets depressed when you get up. And even if the train is not running, you can see here on the hand, for the train pipe of the vacuum brakes that the brakes will activate as soon as the pedal is no longer pressed. It is a very simple uh, system, a real dead man's pedal. It needs to be depressed so that the train does not activate a penalty brake. There will be no alarm, there will be no period of grace, it will just activate the brakes. We will see that in action in a short time. The other system that runs on this train is a train control system called ZBE90 or in English ZBI90 what is short for Zugbeeinflussung Induktiv, an inductive system for train control and consists mainly of magnets of this type here. You can see those magnets in the track always come in pairs typically at the position of a signal and you have if you look at it from the direction that the train is running you have on the right side a permanent magnet that can present its south pole or its north pole to the train 
and on the left side you have an electromagnet that can present a south pole, a south pole or a north pole or it can be switched off altogether and the train we will see that in the presentation in a in a in a well symbolic uh, representation i have not managed to find the view where you can see those receivers on the train actually but they are mounted to the underside of the locomotive and they pick up the magnetic fields from those magnets and so they can see whether they are passing a signal whether it is a main signal or a distant signal and to what aspect the signal is switched we will have a look at this in our presentation in a moment and just to show you that this stuff works this magnet's purpose on a main signal that is showing a red aspect like this one here is to stop the train if you try to run it just like the 2000 hertz magnet in German PZB or the train stop uh, loops in the British uh, TBWS system and obviously they stop the train but the train will stop not in front of the signal but behind the signal so this system cannot prevent the passing of a signal at danger but they can mitigate the uh, well yeah the adverse effects that can come from it so the train will have to be stopped within a certain overlap so that nothing bad happens like here you can see the switch is a bit away from the signal so the train has a bit of a track where it can actually come to a stop before it runs into the line where a possibly a second train can come and it, there will be an accident so just to demonstrate this um, I will have to negate the effects of our dead man's pedal experiment We have to set the master key to on, the reverse it to forward obviously, then we just release the brakes and get going and I simply try to run like a dump guy. Boof. And you see there is a red lamp, maybe you missed it but I will show you where it came on and on the stream or in the video you can just rewind and look at it again. Obviously the game ended because we spat it, but you could hear the um, air going into the vacuum pipe, the train pipe, and the brakes activating and stopping the train. And where the red light came on was this thingy here. This is our aspect display unit, if you want to call it like this, for this ZBI-90 system. It has a green lamp to the left, a yellow lamp or orange lamp in Switzerland in the middle and a red lamp on the right and if this train stop activates activation uh, occurs on a red signal then you will get a red lamp lighting up here. We will have a look at this in our um, presentation a couple of minutes further on. So. Let's demonstrate a brake application from the dead man's pedal. For that we actually have to get some passengers into the train. While the passengers are boarding I want to demonstrate another thing that I found out since last stream. Well maybe not this side. We talked about those um, stop on demand signals that are on the road on some stations along the track. The train does not always stop, that they only stop if a passenger wants to get on the train or off the train. And if a passenger wants to get off the train, he can press this button here. It is called Halt auf Verlangen, stop on demand, stops on request, they translate it here. And if you put push the button, then it will light up and then in the locomotive actually, we will get a marker light lighting up. here this one no actually this one should light up maybe it lights up if we close the doors interesting 
Maybe it did not light up because the train was not on the move or I will have to look at this closer. Maybe it was extinguished again because we are actually at the stop. Let's just try it again. Push the button again. Oh, it is pushed. Or maybe I switched it off again and just... Oh, it does not want to. Well, normally you should get a light lit up. Maybe this is because we are sitting in a station actually and there is no point in requesting a stop if the train is stopped already. Ah, now we can see it. Here, this H indicator, it lights up. Don't mix it up with the doors indicator. Ah yeah, because we open the doors, then it extinguishes. So if we are running the train and a passenger hits this button, we have this indicator lighting up, then we know, okay, we have to stop at the next stop, just like in a bus or on a streetcar, on a tramway, a request stop here. And as soon as we are opening the doors, then this indicator gets extinguished. Okay. So I want to drive a bit and then activate the dead man's pedal so that you can see that it actually works. Let's see if we have to cut it in for that, obviously. The doors are closed. Just one a little look at the signal here. We did not get a completely green signal, but a green over yellow. If you watched the last stream about the signaling system, System L, you know that this is a signal that tells you you can go, but you are limited to a speed of normally 40 here on our narrow gauge uh, railway to 30. What does not really uh, hit us hard because the track limit for this track here is 30 anyway, so the signal speed is at any rate not higher than the track speed. At the same time you can see the shunting signal goes to uh, uh, an aspect that allows you to pass and you can always see this uh, illuminated arrow pointing to the track that the shunting signal refers to. So those two signals in this case they are more or less co-acting. They went from red or um, horizontal line to an aspect that allows you to go with a limited speed and a vertical line. And now I actually start driving. Going out into the tunnel, now we can pass the signal because it was green. And now I just stand up. And You can see it takes a while, but the train comes to a stop. So the Deadman pedal thingy um, stopped the train because we got up without an alarm or anything. can light up because we are sitting in the tunnel. So we can see a modern system probably would not stop the train in the tunnel. But this system here stops the train if the driver stands up, jumps off the train or whatever. So he would have to put a brick or whatever on the deadman pedal so that the system goes on. If you want to recover from a, a penalty break of that kind, the easiest way is to use the main circuit breaker or main switch. Just open it and you can see here in this display that the main switch is open. It already <laughs> starts rolling because the brakes are disengaging, are releasing and then you close it again and then you can just drive on. Probably it might be a good idea first to secure your train, meaning to turn off the propulsion and engage some brakes, set the reverser to na uh, neutral and then do the thingy with the main circuit breaker. Might be the safer solution, but you can see it is possible just to flip the main circuit breaker off and on and then you are recovered from a penalty break of that kind. And now we're doing some real train driving. Mm. Mm. 
turn on my lights as well. Passengers, well, they get some lights too. It might be dark before we get to the station in Kur. I put my external camera in position for the guard signal or the clearance for departure signal that we covered in our last stream. It's the upper one. Alright, we can close the doors, wait a bit for our scheduled departure time. Reverser is at forward. We can already release the local brake while we are waiting the vacuum brakes are holding the train in place. Then we can see that the signal is changing. We can add the departure signal, clearance for departure, and then we can go. And now we are running into the decline, so the driving will be completely different from the driving that we had in the last stream because now we have to use our dynamic brake, use the driving control wheel and let the train fall into the decline and then pump up the dynamic brake until we get to a point where the train is no longer accelerating and then we can get the speed where we want it to have at 60% braking, the train is most of the time stable. At least in the beginning. Sometimes you need a bit more later on, especially you need a bit less. Depends on the gradient. But as a rule of thumb, the 60% typically get the train steady. Not accelerating and running with a steady speed. Now you can see that signal on the left, it is a distance signal showing an announcement of clear and you will see that this lamp will light up as soon as we are passing the magnets associated with this signal. See? Green lamp. Indicating us and remembering us, reminding us that the distance signal that we just passed showed a green, a clear aspect. Now we are passing a main signal and you will see that we will pass a magnet and still not be shown any lights. Our indicator lights stay dark. They do that only at distance signals, not at main signals. We will see that in the presentation later on. Yeah, yeah. And here with the light effect passing over the speed clock does not actually make it easier to keep the speed beyond the 35 kilometers that are allowed here as soon as we are out of the station area. Yeah, so running downhill is a constant controlling of speed with the dynamic brake most of the time. To the right you can see the Eselsee, the Stausee for Arosa, biggest of the three lakes that are associated with Arosa. Yes, thank you AJ for banning another spammer that wants to sell viewers. The viewers that I like can't be bought. So we are running downhill 
towards a stop at Lizzi Rüti. That will be our first station. Before that we will go through a passing area where we have to slow down to 33. If you missed the last stream on how to read those speedboards, I kindly ask you to watch the stream about the system system L signaling. Again a green light on our aspect display for the distance signal in front of the passing area. We will be passing a main signal before we get into the passing area and there was a whistle board because there is a level crossing just in front of the passing area here it is the next green signal is a repeater so we won't get any light lighting up oh no it wasn't a repeater actually it was a full-blown distance signal because we had a main signal in between so our aspect display unit showed us the green light but I already gave away that repeaters typically do not have magnets and they do not show any lamps on the display unit. So that was the passing area, the end sign for the reduction to 30. And we will be soon allowed to go back to 33. That is nice of you to say that. I really like the landscape too. We will have some views later where, we, where, where you get a bit of a clunky and barren landscape in the background. But all in all, I really love the work that Rivet Games did on this DLC. Also in terms of landscape. In the meantime I found out where this strange name Lizzi Rüti actually comes from and it means as much as uh, shadowy clearing. So a place where the trees had been removed and where there is shadow. This is obviously the meaning of this funny name Lizzi Rüti. If it is true I have no means of knowing but this is what I read on the internet. At least this is what they put on their own website. Another whistle board incoming. Here's the level crossing. What the whistle board was good for, obviously. I also like that they put this haze into the the valley so that it doesn't look that sterile and super clear everywhere. And I'm totally happy about this new uh, uh, track rendering. So the, the shadows even when the sun is going down and you get those hard shadows it doesn't look that appalling anymore that it used to look in former times when you always got a batch of shadows after the other. 
Last main signal before let's see Ruti station. Limit to 30. Starting now. If you look at the route in, in real life, there are actually no signs for a speed reduction around Litsi Ruti station. For whatever reason, this might be the cause why the signage in the game is a bit weird too. Here's the train from the opposite direction waiting for us to roll into the platform so that they can leave. So for stopping I just use the dynamic brake to slow the, the train down until we almost get to a standstill. Keep in mind that the dynamic brake will typically not be able to stop the train on its own unless there is a bit of a gradient that helps you. But then you just need to touch the vacuum brakes very slightly and the train will come to a soft stop without the cars running into each other. Then I put the dynamic brakes on full to secure the train and I can bring the driving control wheel back into the neutral position and we can have another look on the train leaving on the other side and on this funny signal we looked at this when it was dark in the other stream and this is what this sign looks like that prohibits you from entering it with uh, with a pantograph vehicle up so if you need electricity you must not pass this sign here and it only shows if the switch is set accordingly and we can't see it now properly because the train is standing in front of it all right did we close the doors already no but now we close the doors signal to green and depart and the green light here will always start showing as soon as you touch the door with your mouse not before for whatever reason as soon as we're out of the station we are in a limit of 35 what is not really signaled but what you have to know so I typically bring the train with propulsion to a speed of about 20 let it slide into the gradient and then slowly apply the dynamic brake until I can stabilize the velocity and then bring the speed to the point where I want to have it by simply lowering or increasing the effort of the dynamic brake a bit and then getting it back you can see with 60% effort we are almost in the equilibrium but this needs constant supervision on the way down and it definitely helps if you know the gradient profile a bit we will get to the presentation at the next stop in Lang Wies and uh, then I will show you how to read those signage for the gradient because they can be a big help too so that you know at what point a steeper gradient begins and at what point you are on level ground so you can anticipate how much effort you need on your dynamic brake
I think mountains like the one that we have in front of us are those, well, objects that people always dislike for being too barren and not enough trees and clunky lump, lump landscaping altogether. I personally do not mind that that much. It's in the distance. And I enjoy the light in the trees that are around, around us. Whistleboard. I think those whistleboards are actually quite easy to miss. They are so unobtrusive. Black and white. Small. Then all of a sudden you're at the, at the level crossing with some dirt road and think, hmm, should I not have used my whistle? You can already see the viaduct for Langwies. Now without any illumination that we had last time. Reduction to 30 incoming. Reduction to 30 starting from here. On the viaduct we will lose speed quite fast. So we have to reduce our braking effort according to how much of the train is going into the level ground on the bridge until we actually have to use some propulsion to get it going and not slowing down too early. Main signal reduction to 30 introduced announced We can slow down for long V's. 30 starting here. Again, dynamic break to get the train almost to a standstill. Well, that was maybe even a bit too early because we are in a quite level ground here at Langwies. Well, we've got the time to do that easy. If you want to know more about those shared signals, like at the end here, please watch our stream from last time. We covered it there. train brake full service <coughs> driving control wheel neutralized this is our departure signal And we go. Driving out of Langwies is a challenging part for either not getting too slow and not over speeding because at first we are in a part that is quite level 
At this point we're going into a gradient. Where we pick up speed quite heavily. So we mustn't get lulled by the first part. It is a 33 li limit here. <coughs> now we are getting back into an even part. And because we didn't do it at Lang V's, I present the presentation at this point here. Before we get even more ahead. So, the safety systems on the GE442 uh, for the Rätische Bahn that we have in the game here. Um, the two systems that we already looked at can be put into the matrix that I'm usually using for safety systems on locomotives like this. We have a system that checks if the driver is present. That is the dead man's pedal and all you need to do is to keep the pedal pressed when the train is moving otherwise the train uh, will activate the brakes. Act actually it will activate the brakes even if it is not moving and you uh, already activated the dead man's pedal and you stand up then the train will activate the brakes and you will have to release them uh, properly before you can start the train. If you don't you get a penalty break. It is not a penalty break that is as um, as fast as the penalty break that you can get from the control, the train control system. It uh, is a softer break application, but it will bring the train to a stop. Um, and then you can recover from it, just like we did that in the beginning of this video. We don't have a system that checks if the engineer or driver is active, so there is no alerter, there is no vigilance system like on the modern British trains or the CIFA in Germany. We don't have to hit a button every 30 seconds or operate controls, so we only have the dead man's pedal. If the driver, the engineer, gets unconscious and slumps onto the pedal, then the dead man's pedal will think everything is good and the train will just go on. Also, we do not have a system that checks if the engineer or driver is reacting to track speed limits. But what we have is a system that checks if the driver is reacting to signals. And this is our ZSI 90, Zugsicherung Induktiv 90, that we have in this DLC. And from what you can read on the internet, the Rätische Bahn on the Kur Arosa line had this um, specific form of train control system approximately starting in whatever 1958 I think before then they had a different system that all uh, that only warned the driver that was not able to apply any penalty brake applications but starting at this time they introduced the ZSI 90 along with a lot of other narrow gauge uh, railways in Switzerland and uh, they are actually still allowed to have it. There is a certain standard um, that I just looked into before the stream issued by the Bundesamt für Verkehr and that allows narrow gauge railways to operate under systems that they used before uh, new systems uh, on the other hand, need to be based on Eurobalises and Euroloops, just like the ETCS system. They don't necessarily need to implement the uh, ETCS system, the European Train Control System, but they can go on with their old systems. But actually, in starting in 2015, from what I read, the Rätische Bahn started to replace the ZSI 90 system with a ZSI 127 system that has different magnets, or they don't have any magnets anymore, they have those Eurobalises like the ETCS system, and that has more functionality than the system that we have here. Um, <coughs> so what we are talking about here is more or less 
vintage stuff it's a historical uh, train control that is not in real life like that anymore at the time I think they have a plan of, of replacing all the ZSI-90 stuff in the Rätische Bahn uh, network until 2025 and Kur has already been replaced from what you can read on the internet. Obviously I'm not an expert on it, but just to put it into context a bit. So what does this ZSI-90 do? The driver needs to acknowledge any signals that give you a warning. That is all the orange signals, the orange distance signals. And we know that from our stream last time that also main signals can show a warning aspect, uh, warning the driver that the next signal will be a red one. And this needs to be acknowledged. Otherwise, he will get a penalty brake application. That is that alarm, acknowledge then penalty break. Then actually the alarm will go on a bit, you don't need to acknowledge it anymore. One time acknowledging is totally enough. The rest is just um, reminding you. And this is quite similar I think uh, to the British AWS system. Just imagine there you're approaching a red or a yellow signal and your AWS sound goes boop instead of ping and you have to press the acknowledge button otherwise you will get a penalty break and then the sunflower lights up to remind you that there was something harmful incoming and this is more or less the same here you get an alarm uh, orange light starts to flash in your uh, cap you have to acknowledge it and then the light will flash on a bit and you hear the alarm just to remind you that something is coming up so the principle, the ruling principle, is uh, quite similar in my opinion. What we have seen at the beginning of the stream is that the ZSI-90 magnets can also stop the train when the train tries to pass a signal at the danger. This is a train stop functionality that we have uh, like in the German system with the 2000 Hz magnets or the TPWS uh, train stop um, circuits in the United Kingdom for example that stop a train so that the train passes the signal at danger so they cannot prevent it but they mitigate the effects because they stop the train in a, in a certain distance behind the signal and then if you arrange your systems properly then no harm will be done if the train gets stopped in this overlap or Durchrutschweg or whatever you might call it the magnets of the ZSI-90 system also allows, uh, allow some uh, sort of overspeed control if you place them correctly. That works uh, quite similar to the Geschwindigkeitsprüfabschnitte, the GPA uh, installations in uh, German railways. We have a stream on that PCB special uh, approach control with uh, Geschwindigkeitsprüfabschnitten where you can uh, hear more about that and you can build installations with uh, the ZSI-90 magnets that work quite similar to that uh, but we don't have it in the DLC here as far as I could see so I won't go deeper into that and um, yeah that's also again a bit like the overspeed sensor system in the TPWS system in Great Britain. You have more or less two magnets and the train needs a certain time traveling from magnet A to magnet B and uh, you set a timer on your train and after he passes or it passes the first magnet and if the train is too fast the timer will not be at zero uh, when the train hits the second magnet and then you can apply the penalty brakes and if the train is slow enough then the timer will have run down to zero before the train gets to the second magnet and things like that you can build with those magnets here as well um, but they are not in the game so just as a little reminder that this is something that the ZSI-90 can do what the ZSI-90 cannot do is uh, brake curves like we had this in the Axis system or the KWB in France and uh, or the GNT in Germany for the tilting trains where or all the modern a ETCS uh, 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 applications where you can actually get from the balises in the track information about uh, at what point uh, at what distance there will be a speed reduction or a red signal even and uh, how you have to slow down 
to still be able to stop your train in front of that. So this brake curve surveillance stuff is not in the Citizen uh, 90, for example. How is this uh, stuff built actually? Have a closer look how those magnets work, how they are arranged in the track. We have seen that in the beginning of the stream. This is our track, this is our locomotive. We are looking on it from above now. And we have seen there are two magnets, one to the right, if you look at it when driving up to them, and one on the left. And the right one, it is a bit smaller and is a bit more rectangular, is a permanent magnet. It is not a magnet that relies on electricity running through a coil and inducing a ma magnetic field, but it is one of those permanent magnets that you know from being a child and playing with them. And you know that they have a south pole and a north pole. And in a compass, for example, the south pole will always point to the south pole of the Earth and the north pole will point to the north pole of the Earth. And uh, depending on how you install this magnet in the track, it can either show the train the North Pole or the South Pole. In our diagrams, the North Pole will be shown with uh, red, and uh, no, the North Pole will be shown with red, and the South Pole will be shown with green. The electromagnet, on the other hand, can uh, be wired to show a North Pole, a South Pole, or it can be off. And this being off is, uh, well, uh, a condition that the permanent magnet obviously cannot do. So what is the ruling principle of this? The train has two receivers, one receiver on the right and one receiver on the left. So the right receiver obviously is to pick up the right magnet and the left receiver is to pick up the left magnet. And the left, uh, the right magnet, the permanent magnet, is supposed to tell the train that the train is passing a signal. So those magnets are attached to the position of the signal and as soon as the right receiver picks up either a north pole or a south pole the train knows whoops I am just passing a signal and depending on whether it is the north pole or the south pole the train will know is it a distant signal or a main signal and then the electromagnet and the status of the electromagnet will tell the train what the signal is actually displaying. We will have a look at this in context in a few seconds. Another interesting thing is, what if the train is running in the other direction? We have a lot of unidirectional uh, railways here in the Arosa line, and if the train is not running from left to right here, but from right to left, then just turn it around in your head, and the right receiver at this point will pick up the off electromagnet and the train will not read any signal at all. What is a good thing? Because the signal here was only meant for this direction, not for the other direction. If there is a signal for the other direction, it needs to have its own set of magnets that are turned around by 180 degrees. Now, let's have a look on our signaling sequence that we had in our last stream. How you get from green signals a distant signal that tells you announcing clear, main signal actually proclaiming clear, then distant signal announcing red, warnung, maybe some signal repeaters that repeat what the distant signal said and then the main signal that is actually showing the red light. So the typical uh, progression of the signals from clear to stop. At this point, the magnets will be like this. The North Pole will tell the train, here is a distant signal. And the electromagnet, in this case, will be set to South Pole. So the left receiver on the train will read uh, North Pole on the right and know, oh, I'm at a distant signal. And the left receiver reads a South Pole and the train knows, okay, I'm passing a distant signal that is showing a clear aspect or an announcement of clear aspect. Because, yeah, this is what your aspect display unit in the train uh, cap will show you. You've seen this in the beginning of the stream, those three lamps, the left one is the green one. It will light up here as every time we're passing a distant signal that is showing it or announcing a clear aspect, we will have this green light flashing. 
And we know from our last stream too that um, in the Swiss system, system L, the aspects are not strictly divided between distance signals and main signals. For example, in the German HV system, the aspects are exclusive for either distance signals or main signals. But uh, both type of signals can show almost any aspect that there is in the uh, system, only the, mm, the the halt signal, the stop signal, the red light and the yellow over yellow, the short run kurze Fahrt aspect are exclusive for the main signals. But a freie Fahrt, a clear, can be shown on the distance signal as well. So we will encounter this in the game actually, we will pass uh, distance signals that will not announce a clear, but they will show a clear aspect. And uh, then we will have our red light, uh, our red light, our green light lighting up on the aspect indicator. Um, so sometimes we are passing a single green, we will have no light lighting up, and sometimes we will have one lighting up. Because if you pass a main signal, the magnets will be wired like this. On the right, the permanent magnet will show us the south pole, so the train knows, oh, I'm at the main signal now. And the green one here, the south pole on the electromagnet on the left side, tells us this signal is cleared. So the train knows, OK, I'm at the main signal and it is green. And it will show you nothing on the aspect display unit. You can just run past it. So with the same aspect, you will get either a green lamp or nothing, depending whether you are on a distant signal or at a main signal. What happens if you hit a distant signal that is at orange? Then again the permanent magnet will show the north pole so that the train knows I'm at the distant signal and the electromagnet will be off. It will not show a south pole, it will not show a north pole, but it will be off. Then the train knows, okay, I'm just passing a signal that shows a approach, a warning aspect. And then your middle lamp will start flashing in orange. It will not flash in a constant fashion like I built it here. It will actually flash in a, a different pattern and at the same time it will sound an alarm. It will first start beep beep, beep beep and then twice or four times a single beep and also the flashing or something like this. And as soon as it starts flashing and beeping, within five seconds you have to acknowledge there is a, I think it is marked with a ZV letters, an acknowledge button, you have to hit that and then everything is okay. The, don't be confused, the train will still flash and beep its sequence, just to remind you, but it will not apply a penalty brake. If you fail to acknowledge, then it will apply a penalty brake. Stop the train and the lighting will go to red. Every time you get the penalty brake, it will show you the red aspect. On the halt signal, on the other hand, more or less the same principle. We could have predicted this. Now the permanent magnet on the right shows us the south pole and we know we are at the main signal now and the electromagnet is off, showing us, okay, the signal is at a stop position. And the train knows, okay, I should never have gotten a magnet combination of that kind without further ado, penalty break red light lighting up, just what we saw in the very beginning of our stream when I played dump and tried to pass the red signal with our train. So this is what can happen on your aspect indi indicator. You can see what combination of the magnets uh, is used. Why is it done in a way that the off on the electromagnet is uh, provoking the most restricting aspect that this particular signal can show? Because in case of a failure, if the magnet loses its power because the, uh, the cable is cut or whatever, it will be off. And then it is fail safe because then the train will get the worst possible uh, signal aspect and indication. It will be brought to a stop and then you can investigate why you got brought to a stop even though the signal did not show. Uh, an orange aspect or a stop aspect or whatever. So, failsafe idea, if you lose the current, 
then the signal will go to the most restricting and also the magnets. What do we need the North Pole uh, on the electromagnet for then? Um, what is happening now? All good? AJ, can you still hear me? Or did my dog just cut a cable and we are in into fail safe? Okay. No, there was some, some, some weird stuff happening on my PC. Okay. What do we need the North Pole on the electromagnet for? Remember what I just said, we can have almost every aspect, not only on a distance signal, but also on a main signal. So a main signal, like this one here, you can see it, it does not have any asterisk, is a main signal, can also show a warning aspect. Then the main signal will not have this longish signal head, but it will have this squarish signal head and look almost like a distance signal, so that you can distinguish them it will typically have this additional sign on top of it or next to it telling the driver even though the signal is square it is a main signal so you don't have to look for the asterisk you know it from this sign that this is the main signal here and if a main signal is showing a warning aspect then you will have this combination of magnets in the track the permanent will tell the train south pole I am a main signal and the red one the North Pole on the electromagnet will tell the train the signal is neither at go nor at stop but at warning. And then the same thing happens that we have here. The yellow light lights up, you will get the alarm, you will have to acknowledge to prevent yourself from getting into a penalty brake application. That's that. That is the set design 90 as it is implemented in this DLC. The as I said, I mentioned them, you can build approach control, speed control circuits with putting magnets of that kind in a distance after each other, um, but they are not in the Arusa Linear DLC, so I will not go into them further. What I will go into further now is the gradient signage. We have seen running downhill requires you to use the dynamic brake all the time, uh, except for some so short spells of track where you are running level or even in an ascent. And to make this easier for you, you get signs telling you what lies in front of you. Just imagine this is your gradient profile. So you're running more or less even and then you are going into a descent and then you are running on a level ground for a certain spell and then you are climbing again quite steep and then a bit less steep. The signs that you will get for this look like this. This sign with the arrow pointing downward, quite intuitive, tells you you are going downward. You are going into a descent and those numbers tell you for how long and for how hard. And the number in smaller print tells you for how long in this case in meters, like 1.2 kilometers. And the other number, the bigger number, tells you for how hard you're going down. And this is in per mil. So you have to divide it by 10 to get the gradient in percent. So this will be a stretch of track for 1.2 kilometers where you go down with a gradient up to 2.8%. Uh, when you're running in a level bit, you will get a sign that looks like this. No arrow pointing up and down, just the level line black in the bottom, y uh, white on the top and you will get a number and as you might expect this is the length of the part of the track that this applies to. So from 1450 you can read you will be on more or less level ground for 1.45 kilometers. The Ascent will be signed like this. The arrow is now pointing upwards. Everything is turned around, but the system is the same. The big number tells you how hard. The smaller number, smaller print number, usually the bigger number in counting the numbers, uh, tells you for how long. So 3.5% uphill for a length of 625 meters. And if it gets less, and typically the rules say 
if there is a change in the gradient of more than 2.0 uh, percent then you can have a, a, a new gradient sign so here then for the next 510 meters you will be in a gradient of 1 percent and so you can adjust and then you know where exactly the the harder slope starts and you need to apply more brakes that was the presentation for today I really enjoyed looking into this Satis I-90 stuff and I'm happy that I found some resources on the internet for how those magnets are actually arranged So here you can see we are going into a descent of up to 6% and you have to catch this with your dynamic brake and maybe I was already too late to catch it because that goes quite fast that you can't catch it and then you overspeed. We will see when we get points for driving next time whether I just got it or I oversped. Obviously we do not have a marker for the 33 on our speed clock so we always have to guess a bit between the 30 and the 35 marker. Now we are going into a piece of track that is... Oh yeah, we just made it. Luckily. Now we are going into a piece of track that is almost even especially when you're running across viaducts then you are typically in a piece of track that is almost even here you can see the signage for it telling you 750 meters you're going to be on level ground and here you can actually use propulsion again so that the train does not get slowed down too hard The next stop, by the way, will be in St. Peter Molinis. We will not stop in Peist, what is on the way. So we can have a little discussion about the stop on demand signs. We have seen in the beginning of the stream what a passenger that is on the train has to do to tell the driver that he wants to get out at the next station. He can push this button, then we will have this indicator lighting up, then we know we have to stop. If a passenger is at the station and wants the train to stop to get on, then we have a bit of a, si a different system. There is a button that he can press uh, on an installation that is at the station and then a special sign will light up and tell the driver that he has to stop at the next station. And uh, in the last stream, you might remember, I said, wouldn't it be cool if those signs were actually working and well in a way I found out now they are working so you can light them uh, with your external cameras but that is all that happens so actually AI trains do not stop you do not get an additional uh, stop in your timetable here so it is more or less like a light switch. You can turn them on and maybe off again. But it does not uh, reflect in your objectives or whatever. So I thought, why did I not just light all the signs that correspond with your stops on your timetable, at least? Wouldn't that be an idea? Because it is a bit cumbersome when you're running a train to jump ahead with the free camera to turn on the lights so that you can role play that you have to stop at the station where you have to stop anyway. Here again we are going into a harder gradient, 2% from here, so not the hardest gradient that we can find on this route, but a bit harder than before.
I think we are now passing Paist soon, so we will see the sign that is not lit, because we don't have to stop here. Uh -huh. Here's the reduction to 30 announced, so we can see that we are closing in on the station. Here is the main signal. And there is the sign here. The diamond, white diamond with the black stripe in the middle and there are two lamps, you cannot really see them. They are not lit at the moment, that means we don't have to stop here in, in, in Paist, which can just go through the station. So far we cannot see, you know, we can see the exit signal, exit signal is green for us. So we just need to slow down to the 30 miles, uh, miles, kilometers, or even get some propulsion for the 30 miles as long as we are running through the station area. Then turn it off again because we will be going into a descent and we will have to catch the descent and have to go out of the 30 area before we can accelerate to 33 again. Whistle board for a level crossing. And now I will try to get the train speed stabilized at the 33. Like this. And jump ahead with the free camera. I hope the train will not do any harm when we leave him or it on its own. You just go ahead to the next station and turn on this lamp that requires us to stop. So this is the next station, St. Peter Molinis. I need to be a bit quick so that I can catch the train again. And here you find this request stop button. Now it is lit and I just go back to the train. Luckily everything worked out. Good thing I tried this before and with what part of the track I can do that. And now keep our eyes open. Funny thing is, at this station there will be happening a lot. We will see the yellow light lighting up, most probably. And we will see the request stop light. And at St. Peter Molinis, the request stop light actually looks different from this uh, direction. Then I just showed you the sign with the, with the white diamond and the black stripe in it. We will just have a flashing white light on the um, distance signal at the entrance of the station area that tells us we have actually to stop in St. Peter Molinis. Main signal that shows us we are getting closer. Reduction to 30 introduced. And now look at the left side of the track. There will be a distance signal with a flashing white signal that tells us we have to stop. Oh, at least I thought it would be. Ah yeah, it is flashing, you can see. And it is flashing the white thing that tells us we have to stop and now this is the orange light and the alarm. I acknowledged it. It goes on beeping, flashing a bit to remind us that we have to stop at the red light and we do our station stop here and know that the signal at the end of the station that we cannot see yet is orange, just like the distance signal announced. So, external camera again. Again, on these installations you find this button. It is operative on stations that have those installations. Stations where the train only stops if requested to do so. 
<coughs> the I think it was a bit further out. Where did we get? Here, on this one. There is a, a still the white flashing light that tells us that we have to stop here. It is a bit strange because typically it is looking like... No, this is too close already. Where is the diamond sign with the flashing light from the other side? It would be the normal variant. Just driving up hill from here. Now it is red obviously because we are sitting in the station. There is the 30. Oh, it's oh yeah, here on the left side, there it is. Here you can see what the normal sign looks like. But now we have to go on. It mustn't be so late. Oh, not forget... Not forget the departure clearance signal. Where are we? Before we pass it. No, I can't do this like that. You have to use... All good. Now the departure clearance signal is set and we can go. The specific service does not require you to stop in Luen Castiel. That's actually quite nice because the services on this DLC, they don't share the same stopping pattern. Sometimes you stop at every station, sometimes you don't stop at all. So this is obviously simulating a bit that most of the stops in between are request stops where the passenger would have to request you to stop. Yeah, and again if anyone hears this, if you want to build in the game random events, that will be something to start with. Starting the train, never knowing at what station you have to stop, so that you have to look actually at those signs, and then perform a stop, or just run through the station. I hope this was not too fast and confusing AJ with those stop lights, but I wanted to, to show that partially they are actually working in the game. But I have to admit it is a bit clumsy to always rush ahead and set your signals. With the external camera. And if you're not driving a train but just running around in uh, passenger mode driving on AI trains then you can push the button as hard as you want the train won't stop <laughs> it will just run through it is a visual thing I think it is great that they did it that they did the effort the 30 announcement sign that came here can be overlooked quite easily if you want to go back in the video later and look at it it is most of the time hidden by this part of your train and then you get jumped by this speed limit execution sign sometimes if you don't know that the reduction happens here now well, we can go back to 33 it was just for this viaduct cutting one of those little valleys Here is a part where we are always losing speed because there is almost no gradient for only a couple of meters and then we are running into this uh, tunnel and in the tunnel the gradient picks up again. You can just see how the cars 
hit the locomotive from behind and you get this jerking because the cars are still in the gradient and the locomotive not and the locomotive is losing speed and the cars bump into the locomotive Even harder gradient incoming, up to 6%. And from this signage, right, I'm not playing it with the HUD. On the HUD you would see it all the time, but without the HUD you can only see that in, the gradi uh, in, in those gradient markers. 6%, that is extremely steep. If you compare that for with, with Sandpatch Grade, for example, 1.5 to 2%, you feel them, every bit of them and 6% well obviously we are not hauling 5000 tons of steel and coal or whatever on those tracks here speed limit increased to 35 Now we are going to Luyen Castiel, another stop, and nobody requested a stop, so the game is telling us go via. But at the same time we always need to be cautious, probably there is a red signal at the end of the passing area. Just because we are not required to stop here does not mean we do not, we are not required to actually pay attention to what the signals are telling us. And not at every station, not at every passing area, we get a distance signal or a repeater. We will get to a situation later on. So now, for example, look what this kind is. It is showing us a single green, freie Fahrt, clear. And when you get closer, you can see that this is actually a distance signal from the way the lenses are arranged and Consequently, we are getting a green light on our aspect display. So this was one of those occasions where a distance signal does not show an announcement, but an aspect that you would associate with a main signal. This was the main signal, the corresponding one. It was also showing a freie Fahrt, but we did not get a green light on our aspect display. Now we have to slow down for the station to 30. On we see, oh, the signal at the end of the station will be red. But this is only a repeater. You could perhaps see the two asterisks. This is why our aspect display is not reacting and we are not getting an orange light on the aspect display and we do not have to acknowledge. We just have to pass this train here. This is why the exit signal was red. This is why we were slowed down. Since the train is already in the station, most probably the signal will have switched to green already, but we still have to be cautious until we can see the signal. Now we can see it, and now we can go on. Just see, the stop marker is here, in front of the ticket machine. can easily be missed if you do not know where to look for it. So, again, running into the gradient, getting the brakes up. 
so that we can aim for the correct speed. 33 again after we are out with our train uh, out of the station area and then again approximately 60% to keep it stable. The next waypoint is Untersachs. Untersachs is one of the two passing areas that are not associated with any station. Just like Haspelgrube between uh, Lizirüti and Arosa. We have Untersachs between Luen Castiel and Kur. And this is actually a tricky passing area, especially when going down. This here again is the upper part of the hydroelectric power plant. That is here producing power from the water that runs down the mountains. We don't need to slow down for it, but we have to whistle. Here the gradient is a bit jerky. Always be prepared that it gets steeper quite fast and then less so and this is for all the critics of the scenery here one of the most barren mountains that you can encounter the one that we have in front of us now if I was in charge at Rivet Games this is one of the mountains that I would fix Probably. There are still two points where the speed limit drops to 30. One is a viaduct, the second one is the passing area at Untersachs. Again, in case you missed it before, we will encounter a distance signal that is showing us a freie Fahrt aspect and we will have our aspect display unit reacting to it, if I'm not mistaken. Well, at least I thought so. No, first we are getting the first reduction to 30. Like here, for this viaduct. back to 33 and at the next passing area you have only the exit signal signal for the passing area there is no repeater there is no distance signal and you cannot see the signal uh, just before you reach almost the point where you have to stop so if that signal is red and you just drive ahead happily along your way this is a big chance to spat out so be prepared for that this is the tunnel where the one bush is growing inside the tunnel sometimes you get those weird artifacts now here is a distant signal again you can see it from the lenses how they are arranged it is showing freie Fahrt and accordingly our aspect unit is reacting to it. Alright, now Untersachs, main signal showing green on the entrance, a limit to 30 is announced, level track 670 meters, 
limit to 30 starts here and here starts the passing area and where this little hut is actually there are the safety markers those checkered boards red and white that you cannot really see yet and you cannot see no signal you can't see any signal yet this is why I'm always so super cautious here you can see the safety marker for the left side you can not see the safety marker for the right side for our side and now we're closing in really go down to five kilometers there's the safety marker on the right side the one that is applicable for us and still we don't see any signal we don't see any signal we have to prepare for a stop and now we're seeing the signal and it is green and we can go on so this is actually a spot where you would wish for a distance signal or a repeater or anything that uh, allows you to go a bit faster here because here you have to be really careful you can't see the signal before you hit the safety marker obviously you can see it a bit earlier if you use the head out of the window view or any other um, external cameras but if you want to do it the way that I'm most of the time doing it driving from the position that you have <coughs> you need to be very really careful here after that we are in a section of track where we are almost on level ground so we need to use 